What up, y'all, and welcome back to another one. Come on, buddy, let's go. Come on, Freddy. Oh, slow going today, huh? Early morning for you or what, bud? Hi, man, hi. We're back from North Dakota. Uh, first of all here, I wanna tell you guys, first of all, the second North Dakota video will be going up Sunday morning. Sunday, early in the a.m., this coming Sunday, it's the last one too. I only got two videos, so you don't wanna miss it. You do not wanna miss it. On top of that, all of the Ducks merch at Ducks Waterfowl. Oh yeah, that new t-shirt, that new hat. Fred Place, Place. Oh, and, well not, don't sit on your shirt, dude. Oh, is that you? Yeah, is that you? But anyways, a ton of you have always told me, Bobby, you gotta get a Fred shirt. You gotta get a shirt with Fred on it. Well, there it is. It's available, Fred with a wood duck in his mouth. If you guys wanna pick up any of this new Ducks merch, I will link it all down in the description below. It's all available, as well as the new Ducks duck and goose call. It's all available as well, and they're full acrylic this year. First year we've ever had full acrylic calls. We priced them so they would not break the bank. A lot of you guys know how expensive acrylic calls are. By goodness, a lot of us want acrylic because they sound so much better. <laughs> They sound awesome. That's the goose and here's the duck. Just one hand in it, left hand, I'm actually right handed. I need to practice on it. I can feed her chuckle on just about anything, but that sounds amazing. A little loud, but I can calm it down a little bit. Sounds amazing. If you want to pick up any of these items, I will link them all down in the description. I was debating. I'm like, how am I going to upload? You know, how am I going to, how am I going to upload? When do I need to upload the North Dakota video? I didn't want to upload it on Friday because foul Fridays are foul Fridays. You know what I mean? So I'm sorry I interrupted the rhythm a little bit, but again, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. The last North Dakota video will be going up. But before we get into the two main subjects today, first subject is going to be Canada. Yes, we all know it's closed, but I don't think a lot of you out there understand the magnitude of waterfowl hunting that is not going to take place up there this year. So I really wanna get into that and I wanna teach you guys a lot of things that you may not know. A lot of you probably do know this, but I think it's gonna turn out to be one heck of a year here and I'll tell you why. In just one second, after that, we're going to uh, head on over to the lodge. Oh, yes. I have a bunch of new things I need to show you that we've gotten done, that we've started on. And we have a few of your guys' packages that we need to open. Oh, come on, Fred. Come here, buddy. Right here. Over here. Come here. Come here, dude. Come here. Sit down. So, Canada. Ducks calls. Boom. Boom. I got to get all this stuff out of my pocket. Canada, guys. So, we all know that Canada, that the Canada borders are shut down. Uh, Americans cannot go up there, and you can't go up there to hunt. So, what has happened with that with COVID? So, just to backtrack a little bit, I'll backtrack uh, to tell you my story. As all you, as most of you know, I love to go to Canada in September for my birthday. The end of September, we did it last year with Jeremy from 780 Outdoors, and he and the boys up there, all of them, they put on a show for us. And that is probably one of the best trips I've ever had in my life. But now, this year, COVID, it has shut down the border. If you didn't know, now you know. And what it, what it has done, uh, me, I'm not a big deal. I'm just a guy out here with a YouTube channel, you know what I mean? But a lot of big, 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 and I mean giant outfitters, and I mean all every one of them all the big outfitters have been just hit as hard as you can as an outfitter right in the gut boom and what has happened is uh if you're a canada-based outfitter a resident canada-based um you can guide other canadian residents and before i say and if i do say something out of context or that may not be uh completely right please all you all you Canadians, all you other guys out there, uh, if you have more to add to this, please drop a comment down below. If I don't mention something that I should have, please 
drop a comment down below so we all uh, can get as much info about this as possible because it's a big, big deal. And it's something that nobody else on YouTube talks about. This is pretty much just here at the channel. So if you're a waterfowl hunter at heart and you want to be in the loop all the time, subscribe. We got a lot coming, y'all. The, the guide service, it's going to be insanely busy. We'll be hunting every day. And you know, when I mean every day, I mean every day. So back at it here, um, Canada. So Canada-based guides, they can guide other Canadians, other locals, but 90%, I believe, 90% of their clientele north of the border is Americans. So what's that tell you? What happens? They ain't going to be guiding. A lot of them have just shut down for the whole entire season, all the way through Snow Goose. Uh, none of them are really banking on it coming coming back open until after the spring or during spring sometime. So, and that is not a fact. That's just a belief right now. We don't know when it's actually going to open up. So long story short, it's a, uh, for one, it is an absolute kick in the rear for a lot of these guides. Uh, and, and a lot of these guys, they are great guys. It is their business. They're just as passionate, if not more passionate than I am about waterfowl. That's why they're up spending their time and money away from their homes here in the States. It's a big deal. So when you have 90% of your clientele fall off, and I'm talking every guide, can you imagine how many outfitters are in Canada? And I mean, how many? This is a little, so this is where I'm getting at with the bird numbers and, and how I believe the hunting, that's the bad part for them guys. I am so sorry to all you guys. You're in my thoughts, you're in my prayers. I hope this thing turns around for all you guides that are being affected by this. But on the other hand, for us down here, uh, who it really don't affect, I do believe that there's going to be some good hunting to be had. This is why. Most really good guides. So let's say, uh, you know, I, I'm in Canada, I'm up there, and I kill a lot of birds. A lot of those guides kill, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's a month or three months time, but let's just say 5,000 birds. 5,000 birds in that month or three months. And then you take that number and you put it across some did more some did less but you then you put it across hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of guide services what's that number do so what i'm getting at is yeah that's a lot of birds dead but that's a lot of birds that are just taught and get to see decoys and get to get to and and get shot at and get learned up before they get down here now on top of that North Dakota's hatch of ducks, just ducks, not geese, not, in, not honkers, ducks in general, is up 53% from last year. And last year it was up, I believe, I may be off, but 18% from the prior year. So, in the last two years, it's up, what, like 70% or something crazy, right? That being said, a lot of us down in the States, uh, Nebraska, me, Texas, all of us, we get a lot of our ducks from North Dakota, believe it or not. So, uh, there's an absolute ton of ducks that come from Canada as well. So, those two things being said, I think duck season is going to be unreal. Now, one thing I do kind of uh, not worry about but think about is with all those guides uh, guiding, you know, throughout September, October, two months, uh, up, up north of the border, they're chasing, they're all doing the same thing. It's what we all do. We chase big piles of birds. So, uh, it's got me thinking, with them not hunting them, are they going to move as fast? Are they going to, because when you hunt them, you, you push birds when you hunt them. You know what I mean? So, with them not hunting, uh, I think it's all going to be on weather. And it's going to be a very natural migration this year. A lot more natural than there has been in tens of twenties of years. I mean... We could see, as long as the hatches are good, which they look phenomenal, I think that we're going to see something uh, this year that we haven't in a long time. And um, whether it's areas getting birds that haven't in a while, or I believe it's just going to be the pressure on those birds is really going to show its face when they show up. I do believe that the ducks in general, we're going to see the main difference here. We're going to see more of them. And they're, and they're going to be dumber this year, just to put it straightforward. They're not going to be shot at a ton. You know what I'm saying? So, if you have 
your own two cents on this, I need you to drop a comment down below. If you've talked about it with your buddies, if you're a guide service, heck, if you're a game warden, <laughs> drop your comment down below. What's it going to be? What's it going to do? Um, like I said, I believe weather is going to be uh, the reason why they push and, and really the only reason they push, not because of the hunting pressure. So I think we'll see a, a much more natural uh, migration. Some Probably something we haven't seen in a while. I think I already said that. Mm -hmm. Just thought of something before I forget it. Um, there's a lot of guide services up there. Let's just say there was an average of maybe seven to 800 guide services, right? A lot of those guide services are large enough that they run two to three to five, but a lot of times two to three spreads every day. So uh, each day you're not just talking about uh, one guide service, one group, maybe eight to 10 people. You're talking the big guide services, they got eight, they have two to three spreads with eight to 10 people of them, maybe six every single day. That's a lot of hunting y'all. Boy, howdy, it's later in the day, obviously. I cleaned up the rig. She was hurting after North Dakota. I'm telling you what, the muddy roads up there, they had a ton of rain before we got there. And uh, <laughs> she was a dirty old girl. But just got back from the post office as well. Picked up some of y'all's mail. We will get to that in one second. But I wanted to give you guys an update on the lodge. I've been holding out on y'all. And there's good reason. Check. It out. We got a lot going on in here, y'all, and I mean a lot. These are all the boxes. Some of them still got cabinets in them. Some of them are already being put in place. Oh, yeah. The kitchen is going in as well as I have got all the paint done. I literally just went and bought another gallon so I could do some touch-up painting, but check it out. Yes. These are the cabinets. Uh, when I looked at them in the catalog, they were a dark, dark, very, very dark brown, but they're darn near black. Anyways, I still like them. I think they look great. I wanted to go with a really dark cabinet because we have light gray walls and white ceilings everywhere. This wall is actually a hair, just a touch darker gray than the rest of the place. So, a lot is gonna be happening in the next, I would say, two weeks for sure. This place is gonna go from, I can promise you, the next two weeks, this place is gonna go from bare kitchen, no island, no drop, this unfinished, to the, literally in two weeks, this thing is gonna look custom. It's coming along, y'all. Full custom stairwell coming. I'll I'll show you guys all the painting that we've got done. And when I say painting, I have got all of the painting done. I gotta do all the edges. This is what I'm doing today. I've got all the ceiling edge done. Some weird reason I forgot to do this little wall right here. But this is a new bathroom. And honestly, this is one of my favorite parts so far. We went from just a normal, dirty room. This used to be uh, the original owners. This used to be his powder coat room. And right here he had an oven, right here he had a fan to get rid of the fumes and whatnot. But we took it from a normal old just storage room really to a full blown brand new bathroom. So like I said before, washer and dryer right here, obviously shower, toilet, small sink. It's looking good, I'm loving it. Speaking of which, uh, guys, if you have been even remotely thinking about booking a hunt with me here at Sand Hill Flyways, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you shoot me a DM on Instagram. I will link it down in the description as well as, if you're not an Instagram guy and you're more of a Facebook guy, Gerald, he runs the Sand Hill Flyway Facebook page as well. So you can message Gerald on there. Either way, two of the best ways to do it. If you don't have social media in general, my email is down in the description as well. You can get a hold of me that way. Literally, I think uh, December, no availability, it's completely full. Um, November, I have November 10th open, and then I have two other dates, the 18th and the 27th, uh, that I can fit two guns per in. But January is pretty full. I think I have January 10th available for about four guns, and that's it. But my dream's coming true. It's insane. This place is turning out literally 10 times better than I ever imagined it would. When you stand about right here, check this out.
When I moved in, this place was just a bare shop. The original owner, right here, he had a big two post lift and he did a ton of different just mechanic work out of here. He had welders, he had plasma cutters. It was just a shop with two furnaces and a little living area that was basically just used for their office with a bathroom. He turned it into this, a full blown lodge, hunting lodge. We're gonna have more than 30 mounts in here. We're gonna have an elk up here. We're gonna have, it's gonna be beautiful. And I did that all in a matter of like four months through five months maybe yeah just insane man when you want to get something done put your mind to it uh put your mind to it think about it before you go to bed make a plan design a plan for the next day it doesn't matter if you're wanting to build something like this or a youtube channel or maybe you want to get better at shooting your gun um anything you want to do in life guys think about it put it in your brain put it in there think about it make a plan plans don't just derive themselves make you a plan hey the next day i'm going to go buy my paint i'm going to start painting by this time and i'm going to paint as long as i can and see how far i get make you a plan for the next day if you don't make plans for the next day guess what your hunt most likely ain't going to work out guess what things that you want to do in life they're not going to happen unless you make plans write them down write them down put them on your uh Put them on you like there's a lot of times that I wrote down an idea on a post-it note and I put it on my bathroom mirror. And when my wife would come by and take it off, I'm like, whoa! She was like, well, go get it done. I'm like, well, it's just a reminder. She's like, well, I'm gonna take it off if you don't get it done. So I'd have to go do it. It's just simple little things. Put them in your head, plan them in there. You gotta practice that, you know? Just like blowing a goose call. The more you practice, the better you're gonna be. No hands, I mean, hands down. Blah, blah. I'm done. My spiel's over. Oh, uh, hi, dude. Hi, Jackson. He loves it in here, man. This floor is so cold. He is the shop dog. Oh, Jackson. Yeah, you is. Which reminds me, there will be a video coming out that is very near and dear to my heart. We had an accident here at the house. Long story short, you just don't want to miss it. We lost a pet. So, due to some predators, that video will be coming. And your boy is not happy about it. I'm out for blood. But today, no packages, this, these two guys. First one, let's do the regular envelope first. This is coming from Brandon Rye. What up, Brandon? If you guys want to send anything to the P.O. Box, it's always, every video is linked down in the description below. Uh, just if you want to send something, just make sure it's appropriate, uh, positive. Um, if you want to do decorations for the lodge, anything, just make sure it's legal and appropriate. Dear Bobby, I really like watching your videos. I enjoy watching you and Fred hunt. I like honker hunting in Southern Minnesota. Me and my dad was wondering if you want to come to Southern Minnesota. We have property that has a pond and hay fields with a lake next to both. Here's my email. Can't wait to see more videos. Brandon, thank you, brother. And he sent me a picture of him. Check that out, old Brandon with two honkers. Um, dude, I usually take up uh, take that up I, I usually take people up on their invites but this year with this lodge and stuff i can guarantee you your boy ain't gonna be able to do anything but be here which i'm good with i got some awesome clients coming and we're gonna have a ton of videos coming directly from the lodge whether it's uh the client story we've got a lot of father sons booked um i get everybody that's booked to hunt here are you guys that know me and i don't know you so uh, it's gonna be an inside look to what all we got going on here. And it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be an absolute operation. What do we have here? So this is the second one. This is coming from Aiden, Aiden Haley. What up, brother? Oh, look at that. We got some father-son action right here. Check it out. Father-son, oh, lots of father-son action. Yeah, honkers, baby. Look at that. Look at that. This is why I do the channel right here. This is what it's about. We make memories while we can waterfowl hunting. There'll be a day where these memories, these ones that you'll have in your photo albums, there'll be a day that memories like this won't be able to be made anymore. So that is something that uh, is very important to me and spreading the love of waterfowl hunting while we can, because there's one day it won't happen dear mr bobby guy my name is aiden haley i am almost 13 years old i live in bradford vermont my favorite bird to hunt is geese i can tell by your pictures brother 
I have always gone goose hunting with my dad since I was about two years old. I have my own decoy collection started. This year we went to New York to hunt snow geese. Oh, I've heard New York snows is awesome. Uh, he said, my dad is a state trooper and really busy. We always watch your videos together. Thank you for making your videos. Your biggest fan, Aiden Haley. Dude, Aiden. Aiden, dad, looks like grandpa maybe. Keep doing it. Keep getting out there. I can't wait to get my kids out there. Hey, uh, Harper, my little girl, eh, she's interested, but not so much. My little boy, Bodie, he's gonna be a duck hunting machine, and I cannot wait to get him out there. But this is what I'm talking about, guys, right here. This is what it's all about. That's what it's all about, right there. That's what, um, you know, I started this channel um, with the hopes that um, I could provide something, you know, whether it was knowledge, a big part of it was knowledge, you know, tips and knowledge. I wanted to provide knowledge and prove to you guys, hey, I might know something you don't, or I might do something that you don't that works that you've, that you might need to try out. Not, not, not ever saying or, or trying to prove that I was better than anybody, just trying to provide a platform that was relatable to a lot of other dudes like me and that spread that where I could, let me find my words, where I could spread my knowledge and, and people could appreciate it and take something from it and then go prosper by using it in the field and have better hunts and make better memories just like these pictures, you know? And now it's grown into this. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's, a, it's a dream come true. I am blessed, uh, so blessed, to the gills. I can't even see straight. The, uh, the first video went up in North Dakota and all you guys watched it immediately. And the views, as you guys can imagine, the views in the summertime have been a struggle. They're always a struggle for me, but this was the first hunt of the season. And let me tell you guys, you guys just, you guys reacted and watched it. And it just showed me, hey, keep your head up. The season's here. It's gonna pop off and that's what it's doing. I, I appreciate all you guys being here. And uh, again, we're gonna have an amazing season, but this season, it's gonna be a lot different. We got a lot going on, oh yeah. So the footage is gonna be awesome. We'll have big camera work, more than GoPro a lot of times. I'm stepping up the content, not only for you guys, but for the Lodge, for myself. We're at that point, we gotta take it to the next level. So, subscribe if you haven't, uh, you're not gonna be disappointed. Uh, we're going to describe all the hunts to you guys, the ins and outs, the wind, the sun, clouds, rain, cold, hot, well, why things are working, why things aren't, work, aren't working. Um, and you guys will be with us every step of the day with the lodge come November. But before that, the early season, we're not going to stop. Hit that little notification bell down there. It'll notify you when your boy uploads. And just like I said before, all that new Ducks gear, uh-huh, the new Fred shirt, duck calls, goose calls, all available right now. I will link them all down in the description below. Thank you all for the support. Without you guys purchasing Ducks Waterfowl gear, the channel would not exist. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart and I truly mean it. But get out there. Until next time. Peace. I've been getting laid back, baby, you should know that I don't need your criticism, pessimism I've been keeping it on the DL Got a girl